the most consequential breakthrough in technological innovation will take place in the East African savannah when global tech leadership, together with foreign direct investment, converge upon Africa's youthful human capital, natural resources, and green energy potential. I am very clear in my mind that this is the moment we are having a conversation about. I am not alone in this conviction. The first movers are already on site and they pitched tent long time ago in Kenya, a country famous for its vibrant entrepreneurship culture and pioneering innovation ecosystem, which is now home to the regional headquarters of Google, IBM, and Oracle, among others. I want to assure you, ladies and gentlemen, on what Ambassador Whitman has presented. Kenya is all that he has said and much more. You will hear Sitoyo Lopokoit is right here with us, give you his presentation of M-Pesa, the mobile money innovation that has transformed payments, challenged traditional banking services, and innovatively solved transactional security issues. M-Pesa is also Kenya's confident announcement to the world that we are ready, able, and willing to play in the, P, in the, in the, in the, in the big tech league. I am aware that it's not enough to have opportunities, however numerous and attractive. Incentives, and I repeat, incentives matter and investment capital responds directly to the institutional dimensions of the operating environment. I have come to the Silicon Valley to underscore the Kenya government's strategic intent to support, through infrastructure and other investment, the enhancement of Kenya's position as the epicenter of Africa's innovation and technological transformation. Due to the various factors, many countries in our path of the world still struggle with low rates of internet penetration, digital literacy, and electric power connectivity. Access to the internet, a requirement to practically a fundamental human rights status throughout the world, remains out of reach for most people on our continent with less than 22% access in 2021 that was reported. Given Africa's unique situation with the international financial system, few countries enjoy the fiscal space required to commit significant resources to strategic investment aimed at systematically developing digital infrastructure, services, skills, and entrepreneurship. For your information, Kenya is among those few. We have provided the infrastructure and institutional framework to support high connectivity throughout the country. Our mobile penetration is the highest on the continent, close to universal. 4G and 5G coverage is 96%, with major urban centers across the country connected to 5G networks. The mobile phone remains the foremost instrument of digital transformation in Kenya, enabling people to perform a broad range of tasks and enjoy a spectrum of services at their convenience. It is the engine that optimizes the restless energy of our youthful and entrepreneurial nation. And as a government, Kenya is the cradle of humankind, is the home of humankind. That is where we all came from. Those of you who are in America, those of you in, the, in Asia and the rest of the world, we all came from somewhere in Kenya. <laughs> and therefore, don't be surprised when you feel at home in Kenya, because it truly is home. And therefore, 
I want to add you. It is said east and west, including north and south, home is best. Come invest at home. Thank you very much. Green energy will define the heart and soul of Kenya's tech growth and development. As you already know, Kenya is a global leader in the generation and utilization of green energy. 93% of our national grid is green, and we are taking necessary measures to provide not only 100% green uh, grid, but also one that provides power with abundance, stability, and affordability required to stay competitive as a manufacturing industrial destination. And just so that you know that we are very serious about this, today in Kenya, we will be signing another 300 megawatts contract with FFI that will help us generate additional power from our geothermal resources. I mean today. It's happening in Kenya as I am here. American companies like Symbion, Delight, Synergy Limited, Sun Culture are already familiar with our position as active players in various sectors in Kenya. Our country is home to the only data center on our continent that is certified under the world's best green building rating system. Not only is the national data center accredited for leadership in energy and environment design, it is also certified by the Uptime Institute as a tier three data center, which means that it can guarantee 99.99% availability of service. Last month, we broke ground for the only 100% green energy powered data center connected to geothermal electric power at the most competitive cost per kilowatt hour. It is projected, as you all know, that 15% of total global energy will soon be consumed by data centers. The signal is officially out. You cannot find a better location for your green data center than in Kenya. Additionally, Kenya's rich package of geostrategic advantages ranging from diplomatic peace and security, humanitarian business and investment, to technology and innovation is complemented by its situation as the gateway of six undersea fiber optic cables, which form the foundation of the country and the region's reliable data connectivity. This advantage is critical for the growth of our data center community. Kenya has now confirmed its position as a continental leader in e-mobility in terms of two and three wheel electric vehicles as well as buses. As we speak, 30 e-mobility companies, including such industry leaders as Kiri EV, Rome, Basico, Arkwright, and Powerhive, all call Kenya home. At the same time, regional leaders like Ambassador, which expanded into Kenya with US support, and Rivian, the US electric vehicle leader that operates safari vehicles in Kenya, will tell you that Kenya is indeed a very pleasant home. The Africa Climate Summit that we held a few days ago enabled Africa's leaders to mobilize effectively in defining a common continental position on climate action, which will shape our agenda in multilateral fora, including the United Nations General Assembly, which we are attending later this week, and the COP28 that is coming up in December. In addition to this, the summit reinforced Kenya's well-earned credentials as a leader in climate action, green transformation, and the commitment to align the global industrial decarbonization agenda with Africa's potential. 
Over 35,000 participants attended the summit, led by 25 African heads of state and governments and the UN General uh, Secretary General. One thing became undeniably clear. The future of green growth is Africa. <laughs> to actualize the intention of developing a business-friendly environment, the following commitments are now very high strategic priorities. First, for the sake of stability, we have a tax code that is simple to enforce, consistent, fair, and predictable that lasts at least three years. This is one commitment that I undertook when I made uh, contact and I had a conversation with the American Chamber of Commerce. Secondly, we are committed to align our institutional framework for data protection with a global regime of global cross-border privacy rules framework. Third, we have eliminated VAT on exported products and the tax on stock-based compensation for employees of startups, as well as domestic equity requirements for ICT companies have been removed. Again, these are a raft of commitments that I did undertake to make Kenya a destination for the kind of companies that you run. You can now operate from Kenya into the region, provide services across the region without paying any additional tax. There was a requirement before that for you to set up in our continent, you needed to um, uh, partner with companies in Kenya to the extent of 30% of equity. We have removed that requirement because we realize that the ability or capability of some of the companies locally to have that kind of resources may not exist, and therefore it served as an impediment. Further, we also give our undertaking to comply with the OECD's a two-pillar solution for digital services tax when it enters into force. I believe it is also necessary at this stage to underscore our commitment to the re-engineering of our country's special economic zones and export processing zones with the intention of making them the most competitive in Africa. The strategic mission is to accelerate the flow of foreign direct investment by simplifying processes and removing procedures and regulations whose only purpose is to create unnecessary barriers to investors. We are further clarifying and rationalizing land regime to make access to land in our special economic zone and export processing zones expeditious. It is also useful to bring to your attention the fact that CCI Global an American firm operating Kenya's biggest PPO out of Tatu City, Kenya's leading privately owned special economic zone, is presently doubling its workforce to 8,000, with a plan to further increase it to 12,000. This will enable CCI to serve American corporations, including United Islands, Spirit Airlines, JetBlue, AT&T, and Shipped thereby giving very young Kenyans between 18 to 24 um, the opportunity to develop and provide the highest level of customer service skills. Thanks to CCI, its American clients, Kenya's famous hospitality has gone global, and we commit to take all necessary measures to make Kenya even more attractive for BPOs. We are working on smartphones to make sure that citizens from the comfort of their homes and villages can access government services. There remains significant opportunity to do more in fostering digital access and inclusion. As a matter of fact, it is possible for us in Kenya to leapfrog over more traditional ICT simply by keeping down the cost of smartphones. The possibility motivated my announcement early in the year that the government would collaborate with the private sector 
to roll out the first million locally assembled smartphones to sell at only US dollars 40. For technology to play its role. <laughs> and just for your information, the factory is up and the first 20,000 units are out. <laughs> for technology to play its role as the great equalizer, it must be supported through investment to become widely available and working between government and the private sector is a necessity, if not an imperative. Kenya's high digital connectivity complements our people's entrepreneurship. In turn, this attracts venture capital to our economy. This is why Kenya defied a global slowing down of venture capital to record Africa's strongest growth in funds raised. According to the funding tracker, Kenya emerged second in venture capital funding, tying with Nigeria, whose population is four times ours and handily beating Egypt and South Africa. <laughs> the reason for Kenya's strong performance in attracting venture uh, capital funding boils down to investor confidence, the knowledge that a startup that succeeds in Kenya is highly likely to scale the rest of Africa. As an example, M-Pesa, a homegrown, typical Kenyan solution now operates in seven countries, serving over 51 million customers. Venture capital flows to Kenya in large volumes is doing so because there is a conducive environment for innovators to test their products. Kenya's sizable youth population is ever hungry with new ideas, fresh innovations, and the fastest technology, and this makes our country a magnet for innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship. We are unequivocally Africa's startup hub. <laughs> Kenya is a wholly people-driven nation, state and economy. Our ability to compete with economies with superior resource endowments comes from the spirit of resilience of our people. At the heart of our entrepreneurial culture are the hopes, dreams, and aspirations of Kenyan people. The irrepressible energy of our people drives our country's overall robustness and particularly our dynamism in technological innovation and beyond. We do not take this for granted and investing in, in people is therefore a critical strategic priority for Kenya. One of the most Kenya, ladies and gentlemen, is your gateway to the Silicon Savannah, to the East African community, the most integrated regional market of 500 million people. It is also a gateway to the Pan-African market of 1.4 billion people. If you build in Kenya, it works for Africa, and if you set up in Kenya, your African footprint is guaranteed. Our country is not only a thriving economy of the hardest workers you can find anywhere, it is also a scenic extravaganza of spectacular geography and a thrilling theater of rare wildlife in majestic action. If you travel from the Indian Ocean coast at the southern end to the world's second largest freshwater lake on the southern, uh, southwestern side, you will inspect the parade of proud palm trees in the coastal lowlands and the enigmatic baobab trees that hide elephants and give way to looming giraffe feeding and leopard sheltering acacia of the Nika, that's the plateau. The habifor magnet savannah grasses where lions and cheetahs stalk hungrily for prey before you enter dense tropical forests higher and further inland on the way to behold 
the dramatic Afro-Alpine flora of freezing mountainside, where you can see the snow-capped peak of Africa's second highest mountain before surveying the breath-stopping escarpments with borders to Lecheron Great Rift Valley, where I come from. You can enjoy all this and more over a course of only 800 kilometers. The diversity of our landscapes and wildlife is amazing. Our people are brilliant winners of diligent and diligent go-getters. Magical Kenya is irresistible. I have learned something fantastic from Ambassador Whitman. Kenya has innumerable marvelous attractions that we have grown up with and often take for granted. I agree with her that Kenya is beautiful and brimming with possibilities, which makes and which will be unleashed by aligning your investments with our opportunities. My work is to create the best possible environment for that to happen. And I give you my commitment that I will do my best and I will do it quickly. Safaricom is developing a partnership with Apple to integrate M-Pesa and its PayPal platform to extend M-Pesa's transactional reach globally. And this, has, and this has nothing to do with Ambassador Whitman being the ambassador of Kenya. <laughs> Our strategic collaboration with Microsoft Intel, IBM, Oracle, and Google are going to be pursued from a similarly pro-tech, solution-oriented, opportunity-enhancing, and transformational standpoint. We have every intent of maximizing the wonderful chances that these companies have presented to radically enhance our service delivery capabilities in skills development and training, research and development, data management, semiconductor manufacturing, cloud platforms, and cybersecurity, as well as various sectoral interventions. Our efforts to strengthen bilateral trade relations between the US and Kenya through the Strategic Trade and Investment Partnership have begun to take shape. And as you heard Ambassador Whitman say, this is a process that we are engaged in and we intend to conclude these negotiations and sign the first ever agreement between America and a country in our African continent. <laughs>